Last time on 1 vs 100, we saw Rob have a good run against the 100, but eventually he ran out of luck and dodges. Michael replaced him and initially struggled. However, he hung on through the tough times and now he's back to fight on. Can he raise his game, defeat the 100 and go home with some serious cash? We're about to find out. Welcome to 1 vs 100. <laughs> Saturday night, join us in the National Lottery 1 vs 100 arena as we play the most competitive show on TV with your host, Ben Shepherd. Good evening and welcome to 1 vs 100, the show where one contestant takes on 100 opponents. Michael here is our contestant from the last show. He has 34 opponents left to beat in the 100. So far, he's got £8,000 in the bank. However, he has only got one dodge left, which means, Michael, you don't have much room to work with. You never know, though, you could still be winning big. All you've got to do is get past that final 34. If you get just one question wrong, though, you will be going home with no money whatsoever. And someone else from the 100 will be taking your place. Yes. Have you been since we last saw you? Yeah, pretty good. Um, still a bit nervous about, you know, what I'm up against here. Possibly used one of my dodges earlier than I, I should have done. But um, so far, the way I've played it, I've been quite happy with, and I've had a thought about it. I've got an idea of how I'm going to play there. Your dad, Ray, he's back here too. Yeah. Excellent. So you ready to take down the final 34? Uh, hopefully, yes. Viewers with digital, satellite or freeview, you can play along by pressing your red button. So good luck to you. Michael, are you ready to play? I am, yes. Thank you. Remaining members of the 100, are you ready to play? Yes! OK, let's play 1 versus 100. <laughs> So let's have a look at your first two categories. Cinema or geography? On the last show, you said you were keen on films. Yeah, um, and I was... The last film, I was, I was pretty cl clear on, so I'm going to go for cinema. OK, we'll take the cinema question, please. Which of these films did not star Brad Pitt? A. Babel. B. Devil's Advocate, C, Meet Joe Black. Remaining members of the 100, you have six seconds to register your answers, starting now. <laughs> Found a Brad Pitt? Not really. No? No, I think he's done a couple of films which have been pretty good. And looking at those three, I know one straight away, which was Meet Joe Black, which he was in. It's definitely a Meet Joe Black. Yeah. Devil's Advocate rings a bell. Uh, I haven't seen it, which is a shame. The fact that it, I've never even heard of Babel sort of gives me the feeling that that could be the one. Purely because of the fact that you'd expect to have heard of a film if Brad Pitt has been in it. You've got one dodge left. It's an awkward one because the thing is, if I can get rid of a, another nine people, I get the opportunity to go for the bonus dodge. And the situation is that, on the basis of what I'm saying now, I would have a guess that probably nine people or above here won't know the answer. Unless they all know and love their films. Indeed, yeah, unless they're all Brad Pitt fans. <laughs> Although it pains me to say it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play my dodge again. Mike would like to employ his final dodge, please. So we're going to have to halve your prize fund. That's down to yep. £4,000. Potentially, you could still be taking home £88,000 if you can take out the final 34. So, of those two, you know he was in Meet Joe Black. Yeah. So it was one or other, Babel or Devil's Advocate. I would probably have said Babel. If it is Babel, I've wasted another dodge. Yeah. Yeah. Let's find out. Is the answer A, Babel? Ooh. Devil's Advocate, of course, which starred Keanu Reeves. So, now, the strategy was, you weren't sure. Hopefully, you'll be able to take out nine of the remaining 34. Yeah. And get that chance at the bonus dodge which would make things a lot more comfortable if you could get it. 
Let's have a look how many members got that question wrong. <laughs> Only four got it wrong. It didn't quite work. You've no. got £4,000. You're still in the game. Michael, it's you versus 30. <laughs> So, there's no safety net now. There's no safety net, no. But unless you had dodged, you wouldn't be here anyway. Exactly. So it was the right thing to do. Let's have a look at your next two categories. Fashion or science? Science, not a clue. Um, that was actually in my list of worst categories. Science was right at the top. So, I'm going to have to go with fashion. OK, we can't take any risks now. No. We need to give ourselves the best shot possible. We'll have yeah. fashion, please. Agnes Dean is a famous name in which fashion profession? A designer, B model, or C photographer? Remaining members of the 100, you have six seconds and counting. Agnes Dean is a famous name in which fashion profession? Never heard of her. Never heard of her. Or him, I don't know. It could be an it. <laughs> Um, I'm going to rule out designer. And the reason being that it says famous name. And as a rule, London Fashion Week tends to get featured on the news and mm -hmm. things like that. And as a rule, they will talk about the new range for a particular designer. And you'd think if they were a famous name, they would have at some point been mentioned on one of those programmes. So I'm going to discount that one. Model is a difficult one because with the way that tabloids are nowadays, they tend to they tend to publicise famous names in that profession as well. And I haven't seen a name, which is sort of leading me towards photographer, which they won't write about because, as a rule, the tabloids tend to look after their own, mm -hmm. which does include photographers. So, on the basis of elimination, I'm going to go for photographer, I think. Sure? Yeah. You don't have a safety net. You've got £4,000. You've still got your double. If you can yeah. defeat the final 34, it's £84,000 potentially yeah. riding on this answer. Well, I'm going to play the double because without a safety net, I might as well. OK, Michael would like to use his double for this question, please. Would you like to go for C Photographer? Yeah. Please light up C Photographer. If C Photographer is the right answer, If it's wrong, you'll be going home with nothing. Yeah. Is C photographer the right answer? A model. I love it. Agnes Dean is a model. Yeah. Michael, that's it. You've battled on. Indeed. You were on course to take home potentially £84,000, but it wasn't to be your yeah. night. Pleased to be given the chance. You've been you a do. great competitor. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank Michael, you. everybody. <laughs> so, unluckily for Michael, he's leaving us with absolutely nothing, having battled all that way and for all this time. Let's see how many people were knocked out like him from that last question. Of the remaining members, who got it wrong? Twenty got it wrong. So ten are left, but which of those ten will be the one to take on the 100? Let's find out. You are the one. Please enter the arena. The new one to challenge the 100 is Grace Downs. Grace is an account manager whose passions are fashion, interior design and surfing. One of her dreams is to learn to surf the big waves in Hawaii. 
To do that, though, she's first got to get past the 100. Will Grace be riding the crest of a wave, or will she be all washed up? We're about to find out. Hello, Grace. How you doing? A bit nervous, but I'm all right. You've no need to be nervous. <laughs> Look, you've made it this far. Know, you are the yes. one. There you go. Where have you come from? Uh, I live in Sussex. You live in Sussex? Yeah, just near Brighton. And what do you do? I work for a shoe company. Wow. Yay! <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling that the, the yay was because you kind of like shoes. Yeah, I've got quite a large collection of shoes. How many shoes have you got? 140 pairs. <laughs> the Imelda <laughs> Marcus of Sussex. <laughs> <laughs> if you do win yeah. big tonight, Grace, yeah. what would you like to do with the money? There's a bit of a theme occurring here, but I'll probably open my own shoe shop. <laughs> You've got enough shoes? You've got this yeah. in stock? No, it's just something I've always wanted to do. I went to university, studied fashion, sort of majored in shoes, obviously work in the shoe industry now, and my long-term goal was always actually to be able to open my own shoe shop, so... Would it be great if you could achieve that? That Wouldn't would that be, be fabulous? pretty cool, yeah. Grace, you are the one. These are your 100 opponents. You've seen already how it works. I'm just going to run you through it one yeah. more time. I'm going to ask you a series of questions you're going to answer, and the 100 are also going to answer. Mm -hmm. If you get just one question wrong, yeah. you're going to go home with absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. Remember, though, you can dodge up to three questions if you're not sure yeah. of the answers. Okay. Okay. Cool. Grace, you ready to play? Yes. 100, are you ready to play? Yes! Okay, let's play. One versus 100. So, Grace, for each question, you're going to have two categories to choose from. Mm -hmm. So, let's have a look at your first two. Events of 2008 or leisure? OK, I am going to go with... leisure. Leisure, please. With which pastime is the name Monty Don most closely associated? A. Cooking, B. Decorating, or C. Gardening? Members of the 100, you have six seconds to register your answers, starting now. The very first thing that popped into my head was gardening. And then afterwards, I started panicking and going, oh, it could be cooking, it could be decorating. <laughs> <laughs> could be any no, of you, them. Yeah, it could be any, of course, but it's definitely not decorating. It definitely isn't that. So it's cooking or gardening. I watch loads of cooking programmes, so I figure I'm pretty much up on my chefs. So I'm pretty sure it's gardening. There's nothing else I can do other than go for it. So gardening it is. OK, you'd like to see, please, gardening. Please. <laughs> this is the first big risk. Is Monty Don most closely associated with C gardening? Yes! <laughs> Great news. OK, let's see how many people got that question wrong. 16 got it wrong. That means you have £16,000 in the bank. It's you versus 84. <laughs> First hurdle is over with. You've got £16,000 in the bank, uh, which is great news because it means you can now boost your winnings by using your double. You can also guarantee your survival by using a dodge. Mm -hmm. However, it is going to cost you. The price of survival is that will slash your price fund in half. Mm -hmm. Having said that, and most importantly, you will stay in the game. OK, let's have a look at the next two categories, please. Actors and actresses or transport? Which of those two categories would you like, Grace? Um, I'll go actors and actresses, I think. OK, yep. actors and actresses, please. Which star was once given the title of America's First Hairdo by Rolling Stone magazine? A, Jennifer Aniston, B, Julia Roberts, or C, Meg Ryan? Remaining members of the 100, you have six seconds and counting. It's, it's one of two. It's not Julia Roberts, I don't think. She's probably more famed for her mouth. For her mouth? <laughs> well, you know, she's got quite a big mouth. She's got a big mouth. She has got a Julia mouth. Roberts. Sorry, has Julia, got if you're watching. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, you know, she has. OK. <laughs> but Jennifer, have you met her? No, no. I probably never will now. No. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Well, yeah, maybe. She'll track you down. Yeah, I'm sure. What She'll did you say? Dragging me through court for slander. <laughs> anyway, um, Jennifer Aniston obviously had quite a famous hairdo from um, 
friends and everything like that. It was quite a copied hairstyle. But then so did Meg Ryan. She had that sort of feathery whole blonde thing when she was in When Harry Met Sally. So it's definitely one of two. I'd probably a push go for Jennifer Aniston. But it really is a 50-50 for me. So the only thing I can do is do a dodge. Grace would like to use her first dodge, please. So you avoid having to answer this question. We've halved your prize fund. That's down to £8,000. Okay. Where are you standing right now? If you defeat the 100, the remaining members, you can take home £142,000. Sounds nice. So you didn't want to answer because you're torn between Jennifer Aniston and Meg Ryan, yeah. as opposed to Big Mouth Roberts. <laughs> If you were if up I there was now, pushed, yeah, if I was up there now, I probably would have gone Jennifer Aniston, just because it was a really copied hairstyle. Okay, please light up a Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> we're going to find out if it is Jennifer Aniston. You've wasted the first of your dodges, and you've lost eight thousand pounds. So ideally, we'd like it to be one of the other two. Is the answer a Jennifer Aniston? You've lost a bit of money, you've still got £8,000. You're still here. Yeah. Let's find out if any of the other guys up there got it wrong, though. We want to see as much red as possible. Please reveal of the remaining members of the 100 who got that question wrong. Let's see the red lights. 26 got it That's wrong. Awesome. Your total after the dodge grace is £8,000. It's now you versus 58. <laughs> So maybe wasted the dodge there, but you've still got two. Yes. And you've got your double, don't forget that. Of course. Potentially you could be going home with £116,000. <laughs> sounds nice, yeah? It sounds quite good, yeah. <laughs> Let's have a look at your next two categories. Oh. Art or politics? The pain. Um, sounds like the 100 didn't like that either. <laughs> it's not a good one, is it, really? Not for us uh, youngsters, anyway. No offence to the old people here, of course. <laughs> um, I can't believe... <laughs> You've insulted every member of the 100. Oh, sorry. And Julia Roberts. I know, it's just... Anyone else? The so, nerves, look. it's the nerves. Um, right, politics is a definite no-no for me. I really don't know anything about politics, so it's going to have to be art. OK, we'll have the art question, please. Cornflower is a shade of which colour? A, blue. B, green. C, yellow. Remaining members of the 100, you have six seconds and counting. You know it? Yes. It's blue. Definitely not yellow or green. Definitely not yellow or green. We're going to go for A, blue. If it's not blue... I'm going to look stupid. <laughs> but there we go. You're going home in nothing. Oh. Is A, blue, the right answer? Suddenly think about it. Yeah. Let's find out how many of the remaining members got it wrong. Twelve. Mm. That's twelve thousand pounds. Your new total has gone up to twenty thousand pounds. Grace, it's now you versus forty-six. <laughs> Let's have a look at the next two categories. Britain or entertainment? It's a no-brainer for me. Um, as much as I've uh, lived in three different places in the country, so I know a little bit about Britain, um, entertainment, I again would say, was probably my stronger category. Therefore, I think I'll go with entertainment. Please. Sounds like a good reason. Let's have entertainment, yeah. please. Oh. Based on the songs of ABBA, the musical Mamma Mia is set in which country? A, Greece, B, Italy, or C, Spain. Remaining members of the 100, you have six seconds and counting. Do you like ABBA? No. Not a, there we go, there's another insult. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> OK, so Julia Roberts, NL yeah. 30, and yeah. ABBA fans. Yeah. No, I just don't really... You're not a fan of that, but that's no, OK. No, they're just not my thing, really. No? No, just a bit too 70s for me. Have you seen or heard the musical? 
Have you heard of it? I've heard of it, yeah, okay. yeah, I've heard of it. So that's a starter, but I actually have no idea. But the logic in my part of my brain, where there's a small bit of logic, Mamma Mia is pretty much an Italian saying. So I would figure it's Italy. Greece, I just don't reckon it would be, just because I just don't reckon it would be. There's no logic to that one. It could be Spain. And so this is one of those moments where I'm like, Mamma Mia, Italy, it fits so well, but I can't really take the risk. There's £20,000 in the bank. So it'll become 10 if I bring it in. It would go down to 10. Nothing. It is. Right, so I'm going to dodge it. OK. Grace would like to employ her second dodge, please. OK, so you think it is Italy? Well, I'm not certain it's Italy, cos I don't really know. It's yeah. definitely not Greece. Greece is out. Greece is out there. OK, I mean... it's not a... You probably would have gone with Italy, though, if yeah, you were up there. Yeah, yeah, I would have done. If I was up there, yeah. OK, let's light up Italy, please. So far, Grace has beaten 54 of her opponents. She has £10,000 in the bank. However, if she eliminates the remaining 46, she could be taking home in excess of £100,000. Can she do it? We're going to find out after we go live to National Lottery HQ for the first of tonight's lottery draws, which are Thunderball and Dream Number. <laughs> Live and direct from National Lottery HQ on this Saturday, the 14th of June, tonight with a lotto double rollover. Here's your host, Connie Fisher. Thanks, Alan, and a big welcome to the show. So, it's been a while, Mr. D. How are you? I'm very well, Connie. Welcome back. We've got an exciting night ahead of us with a lotto double rollover to come. This is the 24th time we've had a double rollover since the lottery began. The last time this happened on a Saturday night draw, though, was on March the 11th, 2006. So, I have to ask, because it's a double rollover, does that mean we have to do double the work? Oh, Connie, look, nothing has changed since you were last with us. All right. What it does mean, though, is that someone could become rich beyond their wildest dreams very, very soon. Fantastic. So, Alan, shall we get to it? You're already nicking my lines, <laughs> aren't you? Let's make some brand-new millionaires this Saturday night, shall we? So grab your tickets and get ready to play the first of tonight's draws, Thunderball. Draw Master Matt is here to make sure everything goes to plan tonight. It's lovely to see you, Matt. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Pleased to hear it. Alan, it's over to you. Nice time. Matt, release the balls, please. 34 balls in this first machine. In a moment, we'll pick five of them. We're using Excalibur and set of balls number four, chosen for us at random earlier today by Paminda Verdi, who's from West Drayton. And the latest news from the draw team is over 119,000 tickets won a Thunderbolt prize on Wednesday. Six tickets, matched with the first five numbers to win five grand apiece. Congratulations if some of that cash came your way. Connie. Drawmaster Matt, are we clear to proceed? Yes, we are. Good luck to you all. Please start the draw. Our drawmaster is Matt Chamberlain, our independent adjudicator, Dominique Laurent. There's the first one, and that is a nine. And the next one, this Saturday night, which is it going to be? We're about to find out. Up she comes, 13. Lucky for somebody tonight. And the next. Up she comes. 28. Two more needed from this, our first machine. Here's the first of them. That is number 16. And then to complete the set from this, our first machine. How about that one there, which is number 20? OK, the match sidle over to the second machine now, if you would, please. Start that one up and release the 14 red Thunderballs. Now, you don't have to match with this next red ball, but if you do, it could make a big difference to what you win. Connie. And remember, if you've matched all the numbers drawn so far, you need to match with this next one as well to be in a chance of winning the top prize of £250,000. It's the all-important Thunderball. And even if you've only got one number so far, then matching with this next ball will make you a winner. So good luck. Please start the draw. Yeah, and good luck from me too. There are 14 in there. We're looking for just one of them to appear. And there it is. Look, that's number six. So, here are tonight's Thunderball numbers again, only this time in ascending order. Nine. 13, 16, 20, and number 28. The Thunderball, number six. Connie. Thanks, Alan. Time now this Saturday night to go green for dream number. <laughs> and 
And don't forget that all the Good Cause money raised from Dream Number is helping to fund the London 2012 Olympic Games and Paralympic Games. Draw Master Matt, are we clear to proceed? Yes, we are. Then to everyone playing tonight, good luck. Please start the draw. Now tonight we're using Tourmaline and Cedibles number four, again chosen by Perminder. And the news from Wednesday's Dream Number draw is that there were over 45,000 winning tickets. Four of them matched with the first five balls in sequence to win £5,000 each. So if you were a midweek winner, Congratulations from all of us here at Lottery HQ. Back to tonight and live now on BBC One. It's time for this weekend's dream number draw. The first one is a five. If you match with that number, you're definitely in the game tonight. Two pounds is yours. We're off to a good start. Next is a three. If you match with those first two numbers, your prize money now stands at ten pounds. Here's the next one. Which will it be? It's a four. Don't forget in this game, you have a one in ten chance of winning a prize. Here's another one, a zero. There are seven tiers of prize money ranging from two pounds to that cool half million. There's a six. Maybe you need to match with these numbers in sequence and with no breaks in the chain. That's a nine. Just one more number to go. Which could it be? There's the answer. Look at two. So, tonight's national lottery dream number is five, three, four, zero, six, nine, two. Connie. Thanks, Alan. We'll be back very soon with that big lot of double rollover and the daily play results. But for now, it's straight back to 1 versus 100 and the very dapper Ben Shepherd. <laughs> back soon. Thank you. Before the lottery, we saw Gracie knock out 54 of her opponents so far. She has £10,000 in the bank. She's dodged this question, but she's still on course to win over £100,000. Was the dodge worth it, or has she wasted another one? We're going to find out. Based on the songs of ABBA, the musical Mamma Mia is said in which country? A, Greece, B, Italy, C, Spain. Absolutely not Greece. Not sure if it's Spain. Kind of felt it was Italy. Didn't want to take the risk. No, I had an inkling, but... We've dodged that. You managed down to 10 grand. If it is Italy... I'll be kicking myself. You'll be kicking yourself. Yep. If the answer be Italy... <laughs> it was oh. Greece. <laughs> well played. Oh, dear. Good job. Well, then. Good job. <laughs> so it absolutely, it positively wasn't Greece. wasn't Greece. Oh, dear. Well, that's the wonder of dodges for you. It is the wonder of dodges. <laughs> Please reveal how many of the remaining members of the 100 got that answer wrong. Look at the red. 31 got it wrong. Your total is 10,000. It's now you versus 15, Grace. They had no idea either. No. You've got one dodge. Yes. You've still got that double as well. Yes. Um. Yep. Okay, okay so we don't want you to leave that behind. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look at your next two categories. Okay. History or bonus dodge? Oh, you have knocked God. out over 75 of your opponents. This yeah. means you get a chance to earn an extra dodge. If you get the question wrong, then you're going to go home with absolutely nothing. And one of the remaining members of the 100 will take your place. You've got one dodge at the moment. I actually really don't know what to do here. Because I'm only up against 15 and I've got a dodge anyway, I could just dodge the next one and then I probably maybe only have one or two questions, but I could have a lot more because it could be people who are really good in the crowd. But then if I do the bonus dodge and I don't know it, I'm out of here. But you know what? I'll take the bonus dodge. You're going to go for it? Yes, I've got to go for it. And anyway, history, I'm pretty rubbish at that, so okay. <laughs> actually I might as well go for the bonus dodge. We're falling towards bonus dodge anyway, aren't we? Yeah, because I don't know anything about history. Okay, we're definitely going for the bonus dodge. Have a listen to this. Okay, you've heard the song. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look at the question. That was the first UK hit single by which artist? A, Christina Aguilera, B, Britney Spears, or C, Jennifer Lopez? Remaining members of the 100, you have six seconds and counting. Mm -hmm. 
first UK hit single by which artist? Do you remember the song? Yes. You know the answer? Yes. <laughs> a little bit excited? Yes. I would like to do the double thingy, because I can't remember what it's really called. And um, OK, there we go. <laughs> I was pretty much there with it. It anyway. is quite simple. Yes. We'd like to play the double, please. <clears throat> and the answer that Grace would like to go for is... A, Christina Aguilera. A, Christina Aguilera, please. If you're right, hopefully, we'll get a lot of money. I'm going to look such a plum if I'm wrong. Is the answer A, Christina Aguilera? was Genie in the Bottle by Christina Aguilera. Mm. You knew the answer. Yep. We're kind of hoping a few of those didn't know the answer. Okay. So we want to see lots and lots of red. Please reveal from the remaining members of the 100 who got that question wrong. There's two. Not too bad. We'll oh. double it. That's £4,000. Your total now is £14,000. More importantly, mm. it's you versus 13. Superstitious Grace? Yes. <laughs> Is 13 a bad number? Yes. <laughs> it's not all bad because, oh. of course, yeah. you did get your bonus dodge. Yes, true. So you're back to two dodges. Yep. You've got £14,000. Mm -hmm. If you can clear out those 13, mm. there's £77,000 up for grabs. Let's have a look at your next two categories <laughs> films or natural world? Films, I think, is probably the best bet for me. Okay, uh, yeah. we'd like the films question, please. Comedies Mean Girls and Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen both starred which actress? A. Lindsay Lohan, B. Katie Holmes, or C. Sarah Michelle Gellar? Remaining members of the 100, you have six seconds and counting. Mean Girls and Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen. Have you seen them? Uh, no, but I know that too. How do you know that? Um, because I read loads of, like, gossip magazines and sometimes when I'm at work, only in my lunch hour, obviously. Obviously. I'll surf some sites that are just about, like, gossip stuff. So which one do you think it is? It is A, Lindsay Lohan. Is the answer A, Lindsay Lohan? Well done. Good answer. Yeah, I'm glad about that. Let's see if this lot like their gossip magazines as well. Please reveal who got the answer to that question wrong. No one. That'll be no one then. Everybody loves their gossip magazines. <laughs> Your total stays at £14,000. You've still got two dodges. Yeah. You're on target for £77,000. It's still you versus 13. <laughs> Let's have a look at your next two categories. Okay. Oh. oh, that's a killer. Geography or science? <laughs> I'd say geography, probably. Yeah? Yeah, out of the two. We'd like geography, please. Which of these cities lies closest to the North Pole? A, Kiev, B, London, or C, New York? Remaining members of the 100, you have six seconds and counting. Do you know your cities? I'd figure it would be Kiev, but I bet you it isn't. I bet it's one of those trick ones and it could be New York, because I know that New York's a bit more above London, because I've been to New York and I've obviously been to London. I've never been to Kiev. Um, so you're pretty sure it's not London? Yeah, pretty sure it's not. Yeah, well, I know it's not London. Definitely Because I not know London. that Kiev and New York are above them in the world. Um, Kiev sounds like the obvious choice, mm -hmm. because it's Russia yeah. and it's outside of the world and it's cold. <laughs> but, you know, it could be New York, but I actually don't know and I have got no idea, so I'll have to dodge it. You're going to dodge this I'm one? I'm going to have to, yeah, because I, I don't know. Be We're going to halve your prize funds? Yes. That is a shame. But but got it. Yeah. <laughs> OK, we're going to employ one of the two remaining dodges, please. 
halve the price fund, that goes down to £7,000. You could still be taking home £70,000. Okay. Which one, if you were sitting up there, would you have gone for? But I'd probably go for New York. OK, we'll take C, New York, please. Is the answer C, New York? <laughs> so it wasn't New York. But it's a good choice that I took the dodge. It eh? was, yeah. You played very well indeed. So you lost a bit of money, but you're still here. Yes. Now, you were certain that it wasn't London. <laughs> Hilarious. The question is, were the remaining members of the 100 certain too? Please reveal who got that answer wrong. <laughs> Ten of them got it wrong. Oh. Your total after the dodge is 7,000. Oh. Grace. It's you versus three. <laughs> so, Grace, there's only three of the 100 left. How about we meet them? Say hello, see what you're up against. Mm -hmm. Hi, Kelly. Hiya. How are you feeling? I'm feeling OK. How's the view from up there? It's uh, pretty good. <laughs> How have you been getting on so far? Have you been making some guesses or have you known most of the answers? I have made a few guesses. That last one was a guess, cos all I could think of was it's something you eat, Kiev. Yes, <laughs> Had right. no idea. You didn't know it was a city? I did, but that was the first thing that came into my mind, food. Have you been there a while, Kelly? <laughs> <laughs> OK, and Helen, how are you? I'm OK. How do you think Grace is getting on? She's doing really well. Do you think that she's picking the right categories for you? Yes, she just needs to keep doing that and that'll <sighs> be lovely. OK, well, look, there's only three of you left up there. Best of luck to the three of you. It's not far to go. Grace, Ooh. for you, those three people are standing between you and as it is, £60,000. Gosh. Let's have a look at your next two categories. OK. Astrology or words and language? I would just say I'm going to go for astrology. Let's have a look at astrology, please. What is the star sign of a person born on April Fool's Day? A, Aries, B, Pisces, or C, Taurus. Remaining members of the 100, you have six seconds and counting. I know someone who's got a birthday in the middle of April, and I know that they're an Aries. Any friends that are Taurian? I think Pisces is February. It's the fish, isn't it? Taurus is a bull. I know the animals. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> no points for that, unfortunately. No, but. Uh... No, it's always. I think that's sort of towards the end of the year. But as you can see, I'm not really 100% sure on it, so I'll probably be a bit silly to go for it, so I'll have to dodge it. You've got one dodge left. I know, I know, I know. At this point, you don't want to take the risk. I can't. Grace would like to use her last dodge on this question, please. <sighs> Half your price fund. Which one would you have gone for? Probably would have gone with Aries. Probably would have gone yeah. for Aries. OK, we're going to go for A, Aries. So far, Grace has beaten 97 of her opponents. She has £3,500 in the bank. If she keeps getting them right, she could be taking home in excess of £55,000. But she's used her last dodge and she still has three left to beat. Can she do it? We're going to find out after we go live to National Lottery HQ for tonight's big lotto draw. <laughs> Welcome back to Lottery HQ. Coming up, we'll have tonight's very exciting lotto double rollover draw. But first, before we came on air, the draw team, alongside an independent adjudicator, carried out tonight's Daily Play draw. And it's over to Alan, who's got the all-important results. Yes, yes, today's Daily Play winning numbers are these. 2, 5, 6, 8, 14, 15 and 25. Connie. And remember, for all of Daily Play draw news results and everything lottery related, visit the website bbc.co.uk forward slash lottery and follow the links. So, Alan, I'm in the mood for a time check, please. <laughs> and before you know it, it's 26 minutes to nine, Connie. So the moment has arrived. Take the phone off the hook and as we get ready to play Saturday night's Big Lotto double rollover. <laughs> So 
So, Alan, the whole nation wants to know, what's the jackpot looking like? Yeah, I know, it's big. A jackpot estimated at £12.7 million, pounds, Connie. Oh, wow, you'd be singing all the way to the bank with that kind of money. <laughs> Alan, take it away. Let's release those double rollover balls. And thanks to Perminda Verdi, we are using Topaz and Sedibles 3. And the news from the draw team is that over 413,000 tickets won a prize midweek. But the big news, of course, is that no-one hit the jackpot on Wednesday night. So... This weekend, ladies and gentlemen, we have on our hands a fabulous, fabulous double rollover. Connie. Drawmaster Matt, are we clear to proceed? Yes, we are, Connie. So from all of us here at Lottery HQ, we really wish you the best of luck. Please start the draw. Tonight's update, around 5 to 11 on BBC One. That's number 29. Remember, since it launched way back in 1994, the National Lottery's given away over £29 billion in prizes. That's number 16. We last saw it half a dozen Wednesdays back, 164th time it's been in the lotto lineup. Here's the next one. And that is number seven. Last drawn all of ten Saturdays back, that 186th time it's appeared before us now. Here is the fourth one. And that is number 34. Good news if it's yours. Also joined us the weekend before last, 149th time as a lotto main ball. Next tonight is number 23. We've seen it a couple of Wednesday nights running recently. 171st time it's been a lotto main ball. And the sixth one is number 17. 17 grand, a good cause is cash. will help a pigeon racing club in South Wales to help them attract younger members. The bonus tonight is number four. So, let's take a look at those numbers again, this time in ascending order. Seven, 16, 17, 23, 29, and number 34. The bonus is number four. Connie. Well, that's all for tonight, but don't forget to join Scott Mills on Wednesday night at 10.35pm with his special guest, Russell Watson. Sarah Kay will be your host for Euro Millions Draw on Friday evening at 11.35pm, straight after Jonathan Ross. But from all of us here, it's good night and back to Ben for the final part of One Versus A Hundred. And don't forget Father's Day tomorrow. Happy Father's Day. Good night. Three. We saw Grace knock out 97 of her opponents. So far, she has £3,500 in the bank. She has used her last dodge on this question. But she's still on course to take home over £55,000. Now, though, she has nowhere left to hide and still has three determined opponents yet to beat. The question you took the dodge on. What is the star sign of a person born on April Fool's Day? A, Aries, B, Pisces, or C, Taurus? You weren't sure? So we dodged. Yep. Feeling it might be Aries, but you just didn't know. No. If it is Aries, you've wasted your last dodge. Yes. Let's find out. Is the answer A, Aries? I don't want to look. Oh. OK, we need to put that behind us. Yep, move on. Please reveal of the remaining three members of the 100 who got that answer wrong. <laughs> no one got it wrong. Uh... <laughs> Callie, Ben and Helen all knew the answer. OK. Got to get them all right now. You have. <laughs> You've got no dodges. Nope. Nowhere left to hide. No. <laughs> if you beat them... Yeah. You could still take home over £55,000. You've just got to get rid of these three. OK. Grace, yes. it's still you versus three. <laughs> OK, let's have a look at your next two categories. Cities or sport? Oh, dear. <laughs> oh this dear. is it now. Yes, I know, this is it. So, I think I probably know more about sport than I do cities. In terms of the other three, I don't really know. So, I think I'll go for sport because it gives me the best chance and I've got to get it right. You've got to get it yeah. right now. There's nowhere for you to go oh, wrong. Oh, God. Let's have sport, please. <laughs> Which sport will be contested at Lord's Cricket Ground during the 2012 Olympics? A, archery. B, baseball. C, hockey. Kelly, Ben, Helen. You have six seconds to answer. Starting now. Which sport will be contested at Lord's Cricket Ground during the 2012 Olympics? 
absolutely no idea. <laughs> oh no. Right, all I know is that Lord's Cricket Ground is cricket. Obviously. Lord's Cricket Ground. <laughs> <laughs> cricket. Right, thank you everyone. <laughs> you know your sport. You know your sport. I know. Maybe I knew more than I thought. <laughs> right, I don't think it's archery. <laughs> No reason, I just don't think it is. Now I'm thinking it's hockey because I don't think that baseball is in the Olympics, but I really don't know. Like, I really, really don't know. It probably is. I just can't think of any more logic to it. Hockey would figure, because hockey's always in the Olympics. And you need to play it on grass, but then you play it on different pitches. Right, I don't really know, so I think it's hockey. <laughs> We're gonna go for C hockey. <sighs> Grace, I can tell you, your remaining three opponents have all got the answer wrong. You've beaten the 100. What? You've done it. They didn't know the answer. I'm going to give you the option to bail. It means you can walk away right now mm -hmm. with £6,500, which is the money that you've got in the bank. Mm -hmm. However, it does mean you won't collect the extra £50,000 mm -hmm. for beating the 100. Mm -hmm. If you choose not to bail, mm -hmm. and hockey, C is the right answer, you'll walk away with £56,500. If it's not the right answer, if you're wrong, I'll lose it all. you'll leave with absolutely nothing. Okay. Are you feeling brave? <laughs> well, sort of, yes, but I can't... I really, actually, six and a half grand would be quite nice. And, yes, 56 and a half grand would be a lot nicer, but on a question where, yeah, OK, you think you're right, but you're not 100%, how can you really do that? Well, I do want the 56, but I'm going to take the six and a half. You gonna bail? I've got to because I don't really know, I and mean, I'm probably gonna kick myself yet again. But I'll take the money. Grace is gonna bail, everybody. Well done. Congratulations. Well done. Oh wow. This is real. Whatever happens, you're going home with six thousand five hundred pounds. Yeah, cool. It's a lovely amount of money. Yeah, it's nice. Question is. Was it the right decision? Oh, here we go. If C, hockey, was the right answer, you would have been going home with £56,500. If it's the wrong answer, thank heaven you bailed. Yes, exactly. It would have been for £56,500. <laughs> Was C, hockey, the right answer? No, you oh. did it! <laughs> Heavens for that! Archery! <laughs> I think, I, I think it would be fair to say you probably have the worst instincts of anyone because yeah. it absolutely definitely wasn't Greece, it absolutely definitely wasn't London, it absolutely definitely wasn't archery. <gasps> oh, my God. Well, you know, I need to swat up on my general knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what oh. you don't need to do. You don't no. need to have to worry about getting some money leaving here today because yeah. you're walking away with £6,500. Brilliant. It is wonderful. Well done. <laughs> Grace, everybody. is leaving with a well-earned £6,500. Digital viewers, I hope you did just as well as she did. Join us next time when we'll pick a brand new one to take on the 100. Maybe someone else will be going home with some serious cash. Who knows? See you then. Good night. <laughs>